Hey everyone, welcome back. I was using a chainsaw the other day and it got me thinking about uh, how in the morning, it was a pretty early cold morning and I had to use the choke to start it, uh, which is, is very common. You have to use the choke all the time to start small engines like these, chainsaws, weed eaters, uh, lawn mowers, things like that. So it got me thinking that it would be kind of interesting to dig into that and see what is a choke? Why does it do what it does? Uh, and so instead of just saying, what is a choke? thought actually what might be more important to start with is why is a choke? Uh, what's the whole purpose of it or what's the challenge that setting the choke really overcomes? And it really has to do with a conversion of energy. So the engine's purpose is to output energy to make the, the wheels turn or in a chainsaw to make the chain run. Uh, but it also has to be able to, to keep itself running, keep it generating the electricity that it requires to run the spark plug, things like that. And on a really cold morning especially, this engine is going to be, the engine itself is so cold that it's going to be absorbing a lot of the energy that's converted when the fuel is exploding inside the cylinder. So therefore less of that energy goes to actually running the engine and keeping itself running. Uh, so we can overcome that in a couple of ways. And in most cars, what they would overcome that by is just pumping a little bit more gas into the engine using the fuel injectors. And they're all electronically controlled these days, so we don't have to set any chokes. Uh, but you will notice that if you start up your car, usually you go to start your car early on a cold morning, there's going to be a lot of exhaust coming out of it for a while. Or when you're driving down the road and everybody else, you know, they just come out of their driveway, their car is just pumping out a whole bunch of extra exhaust because the fuel injectors are throwing a bunch of extra fuel in there because it's got to heat up the engine, but still supply enough energy to run your alternator and drive, obviously drive your car, drive the wheels. Um, and in a small engine like this, this, the whole engine is really tiny, so we don't expect it to take nearly that long to heat up, uh, but we don't have an electronic fuel injection inside of a, a lawnmower or a chainsaw engine. So instead we've got to do something just a little bit different, and that's where the choke comes in. So that's kind of the challenge is we've got to somehow supply extra energy, which means the energy really comes from the fuel. Uh, an amount of gasoline or the gas oil mixture has a certain amount of energy contained inside of it. So we've got to figure out a way to pump a little bit of extra fuel in there because if we just supply our normal fuel air mixture and let that run, uh, it's not going to have enough fuel in it to be able to, to run itself while it's still heating up. Fortunately, these guys are so small that you only have to run the choke for a little while, but the bigger the engine or the colder the morning, you can expect to have to take just a little bit longer of running with that choke. Uh, so that kind of explains the challenge. Why does a choke exist? We, we have to be able to, in, in these small engines that don't have the fuel injector, increase the percentage of fuel, and in this case, it's the, the mixture ratio. We gotta get an additional concentration of gas into the engine to allow it to run. But that brings in a few extra challenges too, which we'll kind of see when we take a look inside of, uh, of that little flap inside the carburetor that controls the choke. So let's take a look inside of this, this piece. This is actually a, the, the intake from a little tiny engine from a lawnmower. Uh, but it, it demonstrates a few of the, the components inside, including this most important one, the choke. So let's take a look close inside that one and, and really see what's going on and define why we call it a choke and what the point is and what it's accomplishing. So let's take a look at this. So inside this piece, there are a couple of flaps. There's a one flap that happens right here, which is actually where the air filter is attached, directly bringing in the air from the outside. There's a second flap that's really difficult to see inside of it, but as I move this lever on the outside, there's a tiny flap inside that's also moving. Now that flap actually controls the amount of fuel air mixture that's reaching the engine. This is where the fuel comes in, so this flap here is happening after the fuel and air are mixed, and this is controlled by the throttle. So if we want to increase the throttle or step on the gas pedal, or in this case, it was a hand lever that controlled the throttle, it would open this flap, allowing more of that fuel air mixture to come through here into the intake of the engine. But this flap here happens before the fuel. So that means that if I close this flap, all it's doing is cutting off air supply, not the air fuel supply. This is what the choke controls. 
This flap here, which is called a butterfly valve, you actually can kind of see that from the, the, the name is derived from what it looks like, but notice how it has a few holes in it. Those holes are very, very uh, carefully placed and sized so that when this is completely closed and the choke is applied, there's only a fixed amount of air let in, but it's certainly a lot less air than when the, when the choke plate is wide open. So if I set the choke or close the choke valve, I'm cutting off the air supply, which actually kind of makes sense from the idea of the word choke. I mean, if you choke, that means to cut off air. So if I close this choke valve, there's only a certain amount of air, even though the fuel is still making it into the engine. So my ratio then, instead of a lot of air and a lot of fuel, the correct amount of both, I still have a lot of fuel, but much less air. So there's a good chance that in this case, if I just set the choke, if I just turn this dial and just close the choke and let it just try and run and run and run and run, I'm probably going to put too much fuel with too little air into the engine. And if I don't get it started in time, there's going to be too much fuel and you can't start it when it's just a pure liquid just filling up the entire cylinder. We call that flooded. So we don't want to flood the engine, which means it's pretty common to have to set the choke try to start it a few times, but if we can't get it started, release the choke and try a few more times, and that a little bit of burning will allow it to, to evaporate and absorb some of that fuel. If it's too wet and you've just completely flooded the engine, sometimes you have to pull out the spark plug and let it dry out and start the whole process over again. And that is much more common to run into that issue on a cold morning because that engine block just has to absorb so much more energy before it finally warms up and then we're back to running at our normal mixture again. So we can just open this valve and then forget about it. The second valve inside, remember, that one's the throttle. That one we can expect to be running all the time. This one has a little screw on the throttle which says that even when it's running at an idle at low throttle, how open does this valve need to be? This is a throttle adjustment. So we can set all of these kind of variables, these parameters in here manually with screws, whereas most often in a fuel injected vehicle, they would be running on a computer. We don't often have to go in and manually adjust these things like this anymore. But these are really common to see on these smaller engines, and this is why we have these two plates and the spring that returns this one right back to where it was, which is the fully open position, and that's the purpose of why we have that choke, that plate, to choke off or cut off the air supply inside the engine so that we have a higher percentage of gas making it to the, uh, to the cylinder. And that's why when you first start it up, there's this big cloud of exhaust coming out of it because you're putting in a lot more gas and therefore you're creating a lot more exhaust. But very quickly, you can open that valve back up again and then it goes back to a normal mixture and we reduce the amount of uh, exhaust that's gonna be coming out of that engine. So this is a really brief look at how a choke works on a small engine like this. There's as many different models and varieties and designs of exactly how this choke operates nearly as there are engines and applications for them. So this certainly doesn't cover all of the choke applications, but the idea of cutting off the supply of air in order to increase the percentage of fuel in the mixture is the common component with what a choke is required to do. So again, increasing that ratio with more fuel can either be done by bringing down the air supply and that brings up the percentage or the ratio of the fuel or by simply bringing up the amount of fuel. And we can accomplish that when, we're, when we have the ability to just increase the amount of fuel through the fuel injectors. So both of those will increase the ratio and they only have to be applied when the engine is warming up until it's running at top efficiency. And that's why we see that increased exhaust early in the morning on cold mornings especially and when we're first getting it up and running. So I hope this video helps. If you have any questions about this kind of thing, post in the comments. I've had a couple other videos with a lot of great questions in them. You guys keep those coming, that's awesome. Uh, and if there's any other special components that uh, you'd like me to do a demo of, if I can find them, uh, then I can certainly tear them apart, learn a little bit about them myself. Uh, and as always, uh, find things yourself that you can tear apart and learn about. That's really the best way to learn things. Do it safely, but don't be afraid to get into things and and tear them and build new things. Uh, that's really the best way to learn. So go build something awesome.